Okay, so we got a question in the forum that is how are plus or minus air volumes calculated? And um, the short answer is uh, you just take the uh, propagated air values, calculate on a cell by cell basis and multiply by cell area. Um, in GCD, this is done a little bit differently depending on what we're looking at. Uh, right here, what I've, uh, I've done is I've loaded up uh, two, let's turn off the air surface there. I've loaded up two um, DEMs. These are from the Reese um, example data. And I've calculated a uh, multi-method um, just using um, a mask that's provided in that data set, um, a multi-method air model. And so these are pretty simple. If we look at the air, um, there's a mix of four different methods in that polygon mask. And there, within those methods, we just had uniform errors, 9, 18, 16, and 12 okay, centimeters. So there's nothing crazy about that. It's uh, just a simple, so I've got two error models here. And what I'm going to do is show you um, where this comes up. So I think the question was coming from, so here I've got a change detection result, which is between 10 and 8. Um, but let me bring this over. And so this is 10 minus 8, and this just used a 10 centimeter minimum level detection. So when that's done, um, the question that's being asked, which is where do these quantities come from? This is actually just really simple in the case of a minimum level of detection being defined. Okay, So in this example right here, I've got... Uh, 108 once thresholded, um, uh, let's see, 1,000 cubic meters of lowering, uh, 72,000 cubic meters of uh, raising, and so then we got a plus or minus 30 and a plus or minus 23. So where do those come from? Well, the details where this was 10, meter, or 10 centimeters, okay? So if we come back here and we take this thresholded um, area of surface lowering, so 301,575 cubic meters, and multiply it by 0.1, that's where we get that value, right? So it's literally multiplying it by the uh, uncertainty thickness. Um, it's not both ways. It's not 20 centimeters. It's just one, one part of that. Um, that's, that's basically what's done. So it could be plus or minus 30,000 just by multiplying that. And you can see this next one also just multiplied by 10 centimeters. So that you can do um, by just multiplying the area of the total um, by the level of detection and you're off to the races. And in this case, you know, that's 27% of the estimate and 32% of the estimate. Now, it's a little different when we do propagated error or probabilistic. So hold on a second, and we'll make another change detection here. Um, this will also be with 10 and 8. Um, but in this case, we'll move off a of simple, and we'll look, just start with a propagated error. And so we'll go with those two error surfaces. Okay. We go ahead and create that. And we'll see a change detection get added here. Calculating histograms, calculating propagated stats. Okay, there we go. And so let's just turn off that and we'll turn off this for now. And so here is your change detection. Okay. Uh, we have it right there, and if I want to look at those change detection results, I still um, have a plus or minus estimate, but in this case, it's not from multiplying this by a constant value because um, it isn't a constant level of detection. It's a level of detection that's calculated on each cell. And so if you really want to see where that is, we don't emphasize this, but if you go to the parameters, uh, these are the two air models that were used. And then it calculates this propagated air surface. And I think we have this set up where if I add, we'll find out what this does. What did that do? Did it 
add anything? Eh, no, that didn't add anything. I might have to manually add that. I think that's what I did end up doing. Okay, so see right here, this is the folder where that change detection was created. Notice this one doesn't have a propagated error because it was just uniform. This one does have this propagated error. And I can go ahead and add that to the map. Oh, I might have to close that down first. Yeah, 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 let it calculate pyramids, that's fine. So notice it's just the intersection of where the two data sets existed. And let's go ahead and we'll just symbolize this in the same way. Well, first I'll, I'll do this. If there were uh, four, were they four unique values? So let's just look at that. So this one had 7, 12, 18, and 0.1. 18 and 10, I guess. And this one had 12, 16, 18, and 9. So we're dealing with uh, uh, actually, yeah, so 8. So there's or seven, 7 different unique values. So if, if we first off symbolize that propagated error and you do unique values, and we do something like this. This won't be the exact same color scheme, but you can see, uh, you know, mo most of this is 11, right? Because most of the survey was TLS, and the TLS in the one had, uh, let's see, 0 0.09, and then in the other had 0.1, so uh, or sorry, uh, had 0 0.07, and so if we just remember that air propagation is going to be uh, point, uh, oh 0.07 times point oh 0.07 plus, okay, so that's point oh oh 0.0049, so remember that, and point oh 0.09 times point oh 0.09, it's point oh 0.081 plus, that, right, and then you take the, uh, the square root of that quantity, and you get 11.4, right? So that's the propagated error value for most of this because most of this is TLS and TLS, okay? And then you can go through and convince yourself that the rest of these are getting calculated. So um, on a single cell, if we looked at the cell resolution, cell resolution is half a meter. So you'd go 0 0.5 times 0 0.5, that would be point. 25 and if you multiply 0.25 by those individual values so back on that 11 for example that 11 401 uh, times uh, 0.5 or whoops times 0.5 right so that would be uh, you know if there would be a, a 0.028 um, cubic meters would be the the volume from one particular cell and so you'd have to go through and compare that to the actual, you know, change detection magnitude uh, to see whether or not that was um, a value that, uh, or how that value compared. Now we're only doing this for the thresholded areas. And so by definition, um, if the volume of air is greater than the magnitude of change, the volume of change, then that's already thresholded out, so it's not included in the calculation. So it's always going to be something less. And so when I'm looking at these change detection results, uh, now in the in the post you said, oh well, I got quite big numbers. Well, it's not uncommon to get pretty big numbers, 33 and 38 percent. So that's where those two values um, come from. And um, it's also not uncommon for the uh, raising to be a little bit higher magnitude than the erosion, because the erosion tends to, in fluvial systems, be more spatially concentrated and of higher magnitude. Um, and so these are quite reasonable numbers, and they're always going to be less than what the 
uh, volumetric estimates are, and this will hold true, you know, regardless of um, uh, of you know how you did the air modeling. The percentages could get higher. Now, what confuses people is where these two numbers come from down here. So let's just back up. So we got surface lowering and raising. So we get the total volume of difference, which is just the sum of those two. So 105 plus 69, right? Um, now the total, the net volume difference, the quantity that people often think of, in this case, the difference there, we've got more lowering than raising. So it's a negative 36,000. But notice this, plus or minus 44,000. And that is an extremely common result because um, we have much more confidence here in the estimate of erosion or the estimate of deposition than the estimate of the net. Um, and in this case, we use uh, the sum for the total, right? So this is 35 plus 26, you get the 61. But then we use propagated air for that one. So again, if I come back to the calculator, um, Let's see here, 35,050 uh, times 35,050, right? So that's a big old, uh, let's see, I think I can put that in memory. And then um, we go 26,711, and we'll square that. Okay, and so we can add that to... Uh, our memory okay so there's the the other one the memory recall and now we can take the square root of that quantity and there we go we got our 44,068 okay I must have made a little mistake there but that's that's basically it um, and so do not do not be alarmed when this thing is potentially greater than 100%. You, you could have a net of zero if these two quantities, if, if, if the estimate of lowering or erosion is the same as the episode of the deposition. So if you're in a system that is closer to equilibrium conditions, um, you should expect to have your volume of difference, you know, could be really, really high. Um, it's actually only going to be the case that this this, vol this this quantity is much, much less when you have a strongly degradational or strongly aggradational signal. Okay. So one more thing in terms of where this, uh, what this does, um, you know, another way you can do change detection is, of course, with probabilistic thresholding. And if you just use the default, uh, we'll do 10, we'll do 8, okay, we'll use the default of 80%. This is going to have the exact same, uh, actually, I take that back. It's not going to be the exact same DOD. It's going to be a slightly different DOD because now we're, uh, we're thresholding more conservatively. So if you think about what propagated air is, um, propagated air is basically the equivalent of a 68% probability of being, uh, of being real. And so on this guy, we've got, uh, let's just zoom out here. And I'm going to toggle off this propagated, okay? And when I do that, Are you noticing anything? Let me do it this way. Actually, I think I need to do it this way. If it's doing what I'm expecting it to do. Oh, where is that swipe? Oh, it is in the effects. There we go. All right, see how when I pull that back, right? I'm pulling away the threshold. And so that threshold is 68%. That is um, 
more liberal, right? It'd be the higher the number on the probability that we threshold at, like if I go to 99%, it's going to be even more extreme. Um, and so I'm including less. And so let's do one more of these. And let's do this one at a 95% probability, right? So what you're doing by using a higher probability is you're being even more conservative, okay? And then we'll go, and in a second, we're going to take a look at the, uh, at the different values of propagated air and see if it makes sense to us. Okay. So now I've got a... Okay, so here's the 95, right? Uh, oh, wait, actually, that's not what I want. I want to do the, the 80. There we go. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm peeling back the 80% um, and revealing the 90%. So see how much gets thrown out with that more conservative right? 95%, sorry. So that's, um, so we're going to be predicting more erosion, more deposition with the 80%. We're going to be predicting even more erosion and deposition with just the propagated air at 68%, okay? So I can go and I can see that real quickly just by opening up some of my propagated view change detection results. I'm looking, um, looking at this and I'm seeing, ooh, okay, 105 and 69 plus or minus 35, 26, okay? So I can switch over to this one, right, 101 and 65, see? So I'm going from the 68 up to the 80, basically. And so those quantities got less, right? But the percentages actually stayed remarkably consistent um, on that. So there's a way that you can intercompare um, in these intercomparisons, you can create a change detection intercomparison. You can say, right, show me, show me the difference on all four of these. Impact of error prop. All right, and so um, if I view that result, it's just an XML file. It's actually, if I try to open it, I think, oh, let's do this. Um, these are a little bit confusing, um, but I'm going to, so, because they're called XML files. An XL file, an XLSX is actually an um, XML file, so I'm just going to open this in here. So I just dragged that into Excel, and this is the inner comparison. So this is allowing us to see these uh different um, and so the, the the different surveys so we've got the or the different change detections so we got the four change detections we did here's the volumetric right and so we can focus in on the differences in these um, in the air so this is the uh, erosion part or lowering this is the raising the deposition part this is total volume and total net volume okay so let's just look at that um, so it should be that our least conservative thing, a 10 centimeter um, in this case, uh, uniform air has the largest quantity of change, right? And then uh, the, the error in this case is just by multiplying that whole area by 10 centimeters. Now this, um, all three of these are going cell by cell, uh, but look how we're getting less and less um, volume estimated. And that is because we are using a propagated, which is the equivalent of 68% probability of change being real. We're using an 80% probability of change being real and a 95%. And so as we get more conservative, we're estimating less, okay? But um, you can see that air volume going down with those. And so this is a very consistent phenomenon where if you are more conservative, 
you're throwing away more information and you have a less um, less uncertainty in the volumetric um, air, but you're probably throwing away, you know, there's a structural uncertainty there that you're throwing away change that might be real. Over on this side, we're seeing that similar trend, okay? And, um, you know, look, look at this mess here you know when you when you start um, uh, the total net volume of difference um, oh wait a minute oh okay so this isn't doing it as a percentage it's not giving us that percentage column um, that's all so it's just giving us these but those are the propagated uh, propagated error values so another way of sort of thinking of that um, in this case, it's kind of interesting if you look at them at vertical averages. So this is not what the question was about, but if you take this volume and you divide it by the area, you get, you know, on average 36 centimeters in this one of lowering, on average 31 centimeters, you know, plus or minus 10 because it was uniform. And you can see how that changes the estimate as we are changing the uh, the propagation method and the threshold method, okay? Um, so that's where that stuff comes from. It's probably more than you wanted to know, um, but um, it's, it's what it's doing. Um, there are arguments uh, that I've had with colleagues about, you know, whether or not this is too conservative. Um, likely is i mean you can digress into all sorts of weeds on here i mean if you if you really want to you know uh go for it you can model on every single cell a probability density function of air and then actually do you know a probability density function actually what you really could do is a pdf of elevation and then you change you you do um, the change detection on those two pdfs and then you actually have a full, you know, uh, probability distribution. What we're doing is a lot simpler. Um, it's defensible, um, but uh, managing your expectations about what's a reasonable result versus an unreasonable result, you got to be careful with. Okay, good luck.